Hey guys, I'm back with a weekly chat. I hope you guys have had a blessed week. And I want to say before I really get into my notes and what has been going on in my week, I feel that I would be extremely remiss if I didn't say anything about what happened in Orlando. Now, there's nothing I can say that you probably have not already heard or even said yourself, but I'll tell you that I'm horrified, I'm angry, I'm saddened by what happened um, in Orlando last um, Sunday. And it just grieves me that this is happening in my country. It grieves me that it happens anywhere. But I just wanted to say that um, I mean, there's really not a lot I can say other than, again, horrified, sad, and angry that this happened. But I, you know, just want to say pray for the survivors of this um, tragedy, horrific, just terrorist event. Yes, I said the word terrorist um, uh, on this video. Um, I know a lot of people are arguing back and forth, was it or was it not, but um Regardless of all that, so many people were murdered and others were injured and just pray for the survivors of this and the family members of everybody, the ones who didn't survive, the ones who did. Um, they've got a, you know, a long road ahead of them. Um, I can't even imagine uh, the mental anguish that these people went through during that event and then a few days after that, the little boy is um, drug off by the alligator at the Disney theme parks or at the, well, the resort. And again, I'm just so sad that that happened. I'm not a parent, but I, I, I think that that has got to be the most horrific event that a parent, I mean, the loss of a child has got to be the most horrific thing that a person could ever go through. Um, Anyway, so I'm just really sad that this has happened and to say pray for these people, all of them, um, and just just keep them in your prayers. That's really what I wanted to say. And I don't have a good segue into my notes at this point. I really don't know where to jump around, so I'm just going to kind of get into them. I hope that this transition doesn't seem insensitive because I do not mean it to be, but... Um, at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and move into my notes. Um, so, um, the Fitbit. Yes, I am still currently wearing it. I've got it on right now. And I got in my notes that last Saturday, so really a week from the day I'm filming this, and uh, last Monday, I walked over 25,000 steps on both of those days that the Fitbit recognized. I don't remember the exact number, and I didn't bring it. I mean, I've got my phone right behind me, but I'm not going to waste time in looking up the exact amount of steps. But both of those days, I hit over 25,000 steps. It was rough, and I will tell you, my left foot has been bothering me. I have not mentioned this before because I don't want to constantly bring up, well, this is hurting and this is hurting, but I think I have a heel spur in my left foot. I uh, don't know a lot about them. I know it's just like a little piece of calcium or bone that sticks out a little bit. So that has actually been bothering me for months, uh, probably since, uh, I want to say February or March. And I've just never said anything to you guys, but I've been dealing with that. So it has been, I was really thankful to be able to get those 25,000 steps. And I know that's a lot. But um, the rest of this week has not been that great, I will tell you, on the walking. So, um, but even despite all of that, I'm not doing that great. The rest of the week, I did lose 1.2 pounds this week. I am super excited about that. And I'm down a total of 5 pounds. And I wanted to bring out like a 5 pound bag of flour out with me, but I don't have a full 5 pound bag. I don't have a fresh one that hasn't been opened. But next time you go to the grocery store, or if you've got one in your pantry, in your kitchen, wherever you would keep your food, um, look at that five pound bag of flour or sugar or whatever and say that is how much five pounds equals to. Or even if you look at a pound, look at um, like, um, I know in the US when they sell butter, it's like four sticks and, and it's in a little box. Um, that is, I believe all four of those sticks is a pound of butter. I may be wrong, but um, 
on the weight. But that's how you can get it in your mind about how much weight you're losing. And when you see that, when I saw that five pound bag of flour, or relatively, I know what it looks like, I'm thinking, you know what? On the scale, the number five doesn't look that big, but when you actually see it, um, a tangible object that you can hold and see, you know, that you're going, that's a lot. So um, I wish it were more, but I am super thankful that I did lose five pounds in total so far. I think it's been about, well, at my highest weight um, that I really started, I mean, I've started before then, but ended up gaining some weight. So um, it's been about 25 days since that highest point, I believe, if I counted correctly this morning. So thrilled about that. Um, it's been a little bit um, stressful this week. I know um, just all the events that's going on, and I'm not trying to put myself in the place of any of these people and say, well, I'm stressed, um, but it's just different things. And I hope that makes sense and nobody's offended by me saying it's been a stressful week because other things have happened. I mean, we still, no matter what happens in the world, your life, um, as long as you're living and breathing, it still goes on. You still experience ups and downs. Um, and this may seem ridiculous to some people, but it caused me a great deal of stress and I'm almost embarrassed to share it with you, but it just really stresses me out. So. My car, um, I think all cars now, I don't know when they started doing this, but they have tire sensor lights. So when the tire pressure gets below a certain amount, that light will come on. And my car is a 2007 model and I've had it, um, it'll be um, nine years this October, the end of October, it'll have, I'll have had it um, nine years. So that tire light has plagued me pretty much ever since I've had the car. It's extremely sensitive and most of the time when it comes on, there is no issue, but I don't know that. <laughs> You're like, is it real? Is it not? And they told me that so much air leaks out of the tires every so many miles or months. I don't remember. So it can get low and they just real refill the tires up. But, um, I had last, I think it was last year before I got the new tires, I had basically two flat tires within a month apart and that scares me to death and that's what caused my stress because I don't, I mean, I'm again embarrassed. I don't have a, I have a clue how to change a tire. I know the mechanics of what you need to do, but I don't have a clue how to do it. Let's put it that way. But my dad did give me this tiny little air compressor that I keep in my car. So if as long as the car, I mean the tire is not blown out, it's just low, I can use that air compressor to fill the tire back up and get it to where I can get to um, some help. So, um, but anyway, the tire light came on on Tuesday morning and that, I mean, seriously causes me stress. Some of you are probably laughing right now. That is okay. I'm not mad at you if you're laughing because I can kind of laugh about it right now. But it literally just, I mean... I just started feeling the stress and that was Tuesday morning. So Tuesday evening, I took it to the tire place, had them check it. None of them were low. They were all perfect or where they needed to be. And so it hit me last year, one of the sensors broke and they told me there's four sensors, I guess one on each tire, that would make sense. And uh, I had to have one of the sensors replaced last year. The car is getting older. So um, they haven't checked the sensor just to be sure that that's what is broken and it needs to be replaced, but that's pretty much it and it's not cheap. So I'm kind of going back and forth. Um, I haven't had any issue with the tires other than the sensor light being on. So at this point I'm like, I hate paying for stuff like that. So I don't know that I want to go ahead and get it fixed. I just don't remember how much it was. If I know I talked about it when it happened last year, I think in one of these videos. So, but anyway, that happened this week um, for me. Um, one thing that I want to say, I don't know whether, and I'm just um, looking at my notes down there, but I don't know whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's kind of a good thing. And if you are addicted to cake, like I'm addicted to cake, and as long as you don't overindulge, I think this little contraption is going to be your new friend. It is mine, excuse me, it's mine. Sorry about that, my voice just, just, just did something weird. <laughs> um, I saw this at Walmart when I was doing grocery shopping and I shouldn't probably shouldn't have gotten it, but I did. It comes with a recipe inside of it. So you make your little cake, you put it in here, put the lid on it, stick it in the microwave for 90 seconds and out comes cake. 
that is very, very good. So the reason why I say this is could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. Um, the good thing is you don't have to bake an entire cake. You can have cake and get that craving out of the way and not have a whole cake that you may be tempted to eat the whole thing. So I have not had cake every single day this week. I just wanted to let you guys know that I am addicted to it, but I have made it and it was good. So um, if you, again, if you've got a sweet addiction, um, unless you're going cold turkey, I think this is a good thing where you can make some cake and not have to worry about dealing with the whole cake. So um, I like that thing. So, um, one completely random thing. I was looking at my perfume collection. Don't you just love how I just jump randomly from one topic to the next? But I was looking at my perfume collection. I was like, oh, which one do I want to wear today? And this was maybe Wednesday. I don't know what day it was. It was this week, this past week. Um, and I noticed, um, that I had four different perfumes with orange in the scent. Um, I don't remember all the names, but... Um, one of them was Orange Blossom from Joe Malone. The other one is uh, Mandarino de Amalfi by Tom Ford. Um, one of them was a Gucci one. And then there's another one. But they all had orange somewhere in the name. And then um, like the Mandarino de Amalfi. I believe Mandarino is a orange. Um, and then um, Amalfi Coast around Sorrento area. They're known for oranges and lemons. So I just thought that was an interesting fact that I obviously... Um, uh, lean towards the orange scented colognes and perfumes. I love them. So random fact about me that I didn't really even realize until I saw four different ones with basically all the same scent. So <laughs> um, of those all, my favorite though is the Jo Malone Orange Blossom. If I had to get rid of the rest of the orange scents and keep one, that is the one I would keep. I love it. It smells so good. Um, Let's see. I was looking at, um, a, a, I was at the, guys, sometimes I get tongue tied and just, I try to say too much all at once and it won't come out. So sorry about that. I am human. I stumble over my words. It happens. I think we all do, but I was looking at a Facebook post and I noticed, um, that Olivia from in the fro up is her name Olivia. Where did I come up with Olivia? Her name's not Olivia. It's Victoria. I'm sorry, in the fro, I saw a Facebook post that was a link to her blog, and uh, she was doing a blog post about uh, Disney's collaboration with Coach. And I love Disney. I'm actually wearing a Disney scarf. I don't know if you guys see that. I'm looking in the viewfinder, but you see the Mickey ears. Absolutely love Disney. And I, for years, I have loved Coach um, handbags. I currently have sold all but one, um, technically all of mine. The other one that has not been sold, um, it was mine that I gave it to my mom and she said I could sell it. So technically all of the ones that I personally kept have been sold. So for years, and I've talked about this before, I loved Coach. That was the only handbag I wanted was by Coach. And then I just got where I did not like the brand anymore. But over the past few years, couple years, I would say, I've started to actually like the way they look. Um, they've done collaborations with the Peanuts line. So they've had Snoopy on some of them. I thought they were so cute. I did not get any of those. I do not plan on getting any of the Disney ones, but if you have time, go on their website, Coach's website, and look at the Disney collaboration bags. They have some of the cutest ones. Some of the bags actually have Disney ears. And when I looked at the price, I went, that doesn't seem, I mean, it's pricey, but it didn't seem too pricey for the Coach handbags and for what it was. And then they, I haven't seen one in person, but they opened it up where you could see the inside, and I realized this is a tiny, tiny, tiny bag. And, um, but it is cute as it can be. It's got the Disney ears on it. I really loved it. I do not plan on buying one, but I just thought you might be interested if you like Coach and you like Disney and you're in the market for a new handbag. They've also got backpacks. And if you really want to throw down a lot of money, they've got a leather jacket. Um, I think that was over a thousand dollars. They have, um, a Mickey, a leather Mickey. That's like a toy, not really a toy because it was like the largest one. Or the smallest one I want to say was around 500 something. I don't remember, but they're expensive, but they're cute. Um, not planning on purchasing any of that, but you never know if they still have any left. And then Coach does their extra 30% off 
one of those backpacks I really like those could come home with me I doubt it though but um, I just thought it was cute so go take a look at that if you guys want to see that um, one thing I did not watch this video and I'm not going to say who it is but if you are subscribed to some of the same people that I'm subscribed to you may have seen the video and the video may have been done tastefully but by the title of it, I don't know how this could be done tastefully. And basically the title was my shaving and pamper routine. And one of the photographs in the thumbnail was basically this girl, from what I remember, I could be wrong, she was um, showing a photo of her shaving this area. I'm like, how far is too far for videos um, to do on YouTube? I didn't watch the video, so again, I probably shouldn't be talking about this, but just from the title and the thumbnail, in my opinion, I thought that was too far to go. Just my opinion. Maybe I'm an old fuddy-duddy and just a little too conservative. I don't know about that, but um, I just did. I thought that was just distasteful in my opinion. You may think differently, and that is okay if you do. Um, uh, looking, 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 looking. One last thing that I want to talk about, and I really want to know your thoughts, so please leave me some feedback on this one. Um, you can comment about anything I've talked about, but I would love to hear feedback on this topic. And I just thought of something else. There's one other thing, and I'll just um, I'll get after this one. But why do you guys, you personally, subscribe and then maybe unsubscribe to different channels? What are you looking for? I thought, you know, I did it in my mind. I thought, well, I like personality. I like fashion, um, or content I should say. So content, personality um, are the major reasons that I would subscribe to certain channels. Now I am subscribed to one channel and I like her, con not all of her content, but I like the content. She does designer fashion videos. Personality wise, um, it's not there for me, but I like seeing the content on that. And I really don't find her offensive. I just think their personality wise is just not there for me. So um, I was just curious, why do you subscribe to channels? And then what makes you unsubscribe? Is it I'm just not interested anymore? Um, the channel took a different turn. I remember this one girl I was orig originally subscribed to and I legit try not to unsubscribe to any people. I mean, I mean, try may be the wrong word, but I generally do not. I have unsubscribed to people, but um, generally if I've subscribed, I usually just stay subscribed and just don't watch them if I'm not interested anymore, which really doesn't help that person all because watching the videos really helps the YouTuber. But I remember when I started watching her, I liked the content. Then a few months um, after I started watching her channel, the, the content completely took a completely like 180 direction from what it was. And I was just remotely not even interested in that anymore. And I will admit I did unsubscribe to that channel. So I'm just curious, why do you subscribe and uns unsubscribe? And um, if, you know, one thing I want to say this, um, as far as what I put out on content, I don't feel the need to ask you guys what do you want to see because if I cannot come up with my own ideas and create, be creative, um, you tell me, hey, I wish you would film this video. I may not even have an interest in that topic. And, and then it would just be like, um, just to film it because somebody else wants to see it. Now, I will take ideas. I would love to hear from you. What would you like to see? But, I mean, it could be a clothing style. If it's something that I'm already interested in and you may say, hey, why don't you do this? That could trigger a thought that I just never thought of. But I just never understand why do people say, um, I don't have any ideas. Tell me what you want to see. I just think if you can't come up with your own stuff, why are you doing it? But anyway, just on that. So on the very last thing, the clock is ticking me down. So let me stop the camera and restart it. So if you see me glancing over, I was looking at the clock earlier at the towards the end because I could see it counting down. So one thing, I hope I'm not um, letting the cat out of the bag. And this is the last thing I'm going to talk about. But I'm very, very excited. So today... On her way to Nashville is my friend Katie from Louisiana. She and her husband John are coming to Nashville for a convention. 
And so the day this video goes up and goes live, I will get to see her. So I'm super excited. They're supposed to get into Nashville sometime tonight. So I will see her tomorrow. We're going to go have lunch tomorrow. I am thrilled. I saw her last year. So we've actually met in person um, the past three years where she and her husband have come to Nashville. So, um, so I'll see her tomorrow. And then they... Um, add me on as a guest um, to their ticket so I can go to the convention. So my plan is to go out to that on Friday so I'll see her, her and her husband then. And But I'm just thrilled about it. So I hope, I don't think she's kept that a secret, so I hope I've not let the cat out of the bag. And that is a really weird statement because I'm like, why was the cat even doing it in the bag? But nevertheless, um, I don't think it's a secret that they're coming. So Anyway, I'm thrilled I'm going to be seeing my YouTube friend, and um, anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video, and I hope um, you guys all have a blessed and wonderful Sunday, and the rest of the week, I hope it's good. I hope life is stress-free for all of us. I hope we have a little bit more peace this next week, and that everybody is doing well. Love you guys, and I wanted to say... <laughs> I can never stop talking. <laughs> um, when I say those things that I hope you have a blessed and wonderful week and that it's awesome, the best week ever of your life, I sincerely mean it. I'm not just saying that to say that. I really and truly hope that is the case. I pray for you guys. I hope you're doing well. So I'm going to end it with that. Bye, guys.